Hello and welcome to Warblog. Um, I'm not sure where it is now. I'm going to play the Battle of Naku Chu. There it is. It was a recent one. There's loads I haven't done videos for, but I was just looking at this and um, I thought I'd do it. It's going to be quite a simple one. I mean, basically the um, uh, the Chinese people overwhelmed the Indians um, in this sort of disputed area. Um, obviously, a long time ago. Uh, it's one part of two-pronged so I haven't done the other part I can't quite remember where it is etc they overwhelm them basically I mean you can see they're just massive numbers um, but the thing that makes it sort of interesting is that they don't attack them across the bridges see the Indians thought they had the, de the bridges quite well defended and to some extent you can sort of think well hang on you know I mean if they felt that they could hold significantly with just sort of understrength companies they basically had an understrength uh, battalion across the line um, you know it goes some way to sort of show what can f deter a force of that nature um, you, you, you know because even if you had a human wave and people knew that quite a few people were going to get shot as they tried to do it the whole attack wouldn't wouldn't happen because the you know, you know the commanders wouldn't allow that even though here yeah, you can see well we're only going to lose uh, two percent but you know two percent is like you know four thousand people and there's only like you know 500 defending um you might not want to do it even though you're definitely going to win but that's all by the by i mean they they, they obviously held their ground that they weren't reinforced uh, by the indian government um i can't remember the exact details you can sort of read it but Basically, the key thing is they don't come across these bridges. It's the the, wa the water level is quite low, and you could sort of do it again by sort of saying, "Well, change these dark blue to light blue, which is uncrossable," um, and see how that works. But even so, there is definitely a path going across here, which would indicate some kind of crossing point. So I'll put a ford, and there's also another one here. So they they have the bridges, but they don't have this ford, which gets, strikes me as a, a bit unintuitive but basically the Chinese forces come across the river everywhere um, you, you, you know and we're going to get to that when we play it so let me just use the so basically they, they, they sort of come across the river I mean you can look at the plans And the Indian forces basically retreat. So that is um, what happens. So we're going to play it and see what happens. Well. Hang on. That's not right, is it? I'll fix that now. Okay, I've, I've fixed it. I'm actually going to sort of start again as well, just to sort of check. I think I know what was wrong. Yeah, so it's now corrected. It's just because I've got the Carpo La 2 is 16,000 feet. This is the Himalayas. It's all mountains. It had a little comma in there, and that was messing things up. Um, so I hadn't done it wrong. It's just that comma messed things up. So I'm looking at these other ones to see whether this doesn't look like it. So anyway, we'll play. Um, now, I'm going to go the long way around here. I don't want to get into a zone of control just yet. But this force can go straight across the river. Probably not a lot of points splitting those ones up. And there we have it. They're all fortified. 
So, hmm, can't really get across here without going into a zone of control. But, if we can cross there, but let's cross here first. Hmm. Actually, I want to leave something on each hex. So that will be covered, that will be covered, we'll need to send something, that will be covered, we need to send something back from there, and we really need to send something back from there, but not a problem. Indians going to stay the same again. So we've got that bridge covered, we'll send, well, we won't send this one, we'll send something from here, because there's lots of those, and we'll come across the river here. We're also coming down here. So we've got to come into a zone of control. Um, push him there. Okay. Okay, well we can do an attack here, so let's see what this actually comes out like. I mean, they're going to be worth 4, they're going to be worth 12. But we've got no movement, so we'll be 2 to 1. So they're not the easiest attacks in the world. But they certainly can't counter-attack. Now the Indians could start running away. One minute, I'm just going to put a reminder up on my board. Okay. Ah, so we can attack there now. If they're worth twelve a time, I'm not really gonna I'm not gonna get up to that three to one, let's just go for it. I think they should be twelve. Yep. Oh I could have I was thinking of moving some of these around. But I was not that far off of um, 36. So if I had moved into one of these other hexes, that might have got up to a 3 to 1. So what did I need for that? 4, 8, 9... Right, he's going to sit there. He's going to sit there. Well, he's now only worth four, so we should be able to at least push him away.
and an exchange, not quite. So he might be able to push himself back in there. What's he doing there? Okay, well they're going to move back in. It's one of the problems with that. You need to sort of like, if I hadn't have used that, I could have then moved in to, um, to to occupy that hex. I keep forgetting things like that. Nothing else is going to move. So it's still not really easy. Okay, so we're building up for the attacks. He should have recovered a little, but... He's not going to get away this time. And it'd be interesting to see whether he manages to retreat across this stream into there. I can't remember how the rules work. Yeah, he retreated. 3 to 1 with a DR. However, this time... Put him there. Now I can attack him across the stream, but I don't want to fire against the odds. Um, this would like be a one to one times ten, twenty, thirty percent. Still not going to get the two to one. Let's see what we can get here. One, two, three, four. This could be a two to one. Just, just approaching a two to one, possibly. I'm going to leave him out of it. <sighs> Exchange. If I left a minute, that might have been a different situation. Okay, here what we're going to do is a siege. I wonder if we can do siege and attrition. Depression one. Let's go for an attrition. Go for attrition. One. I'll recover that. Oh well. He should have maybe run away. However,
And I'm going to recover everyone there. So we'll go for nutrition here. Point two. And nutrition here. Let's go for a siege. Huh. Okay. He's going to try and run away. But now that's the end of his turn. Okay, let's go for an attack again. It's a lot tougher than I thought it would be. And I did tone the number of Chinese units down to stop it being completely overwhelming. An exchange. Oh, I don't want to push that much. Okay. There's no objective markers on here actually. Okay, he's going to try and run away. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, so, well, let's see if we can free up this force over here now. Absolutely no need to keep something in the reserve, because if he gets a DR, he's out of it. Yep. So, we've now taken that, which means that all these units will be able to go in that direction. I'm going to push him down here, these two units this way, and he is also going to go in that direction. But everyone else is going to go in this direction. They need to recover, so we'll leave that. He's going to try and run away. But he doesn't want to go in that direction, so he's really only got one choice. Through the mountains. Oops. Okay. I was just testing that. Then we keep their formation as they move forward. Okay, well, it's going to try and run away. Oops. Not a lot of point in bothering with any of the terrain features because. You can only move one hex at a time.
Well, let's stop in preparation. Moving that way. I'm going to leave them now. I'm going to say they've got away, but I'll consider these as sort of chasing them. I'm not going to commit any more battle because they've they, they run away. One minute. Okay. Chinese turn. The only thing is, I think the, the, the way the battle went historically, they went this way. Whereas what we seems to have done is gone this way. But otherwise, other than that, it seems sort of fairly similar. And maybe, knowing the odds, maybe that's what they did. Sort of instead of trying to do each piece, as they did there, a bit for this, a bit for that, none of them were sort of overwhelming. They should have maybe just sort of started everything on this lot and then gone along like that, just blocking these rivers. Although they don't need the bridges to cross them. Let's just sort of make sure that we're clear that we're committing those units there. Exchange. Well, three to one, four to one, possibly a five to one next turn. Okay, that's all done. I'm not going to bother in any more of that movement. I want to leave one unit for. Um, to move into that hex. Yes, I've got it. Would be the one at the bottom of the stack. Okay. Well, they could try and run away now. And why not? Oh no, too late. In the turn, they're definitely going to try and run away now. which means we can take out this bridge hex, which should be an objective marker really, easily. And here, they might put up a fight. We'll put everyone in because we're totally surrounding them. Because 
there, there should be, if only about 24 in there. Zero depression, zero depression. I mean, they should be at 24. So what will we be at? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So that's 60. So it's going to be a 3 or 4 to 1, possibly a 5 to 1. 3 to 1. Oh, look at that, 12. But it was a 3 to 1. 24. Oh no, that, yeah, that was a 3 to 1. But um needed just a fraction more for that. Five four to one. Okay. They're running away. Going to recover. The young person's running away. We are actually going to make an effort to take that bridge or let him recover. The in person's running away. So let's move these along a bit. Okay, let's try again with this three to one. It might be a four to one once that unit, because that unit did seem to be down slightly, but I don't think it's going to make a lot of difference. We've got another unit coming across, which might push it up to four to one, but three to one, you know, I mean, getting a 12 was just silly. I mean, this should, in theory, be a DR. Three to one and a DR. So that's those units out. So I think I could have done that more efficiently, and this is where the, it sort of comes down to um, modelling and simulation. Because if you think of it as a simulation tool, I sort of think, well, you know, I mean, I'm not saying it is, I never want to really push these as simulations, but if you were to look at it as a simulation, or at the very worst, sort of, you know, how you played the game and doing it better the next time, I wouldn't have split my forces up to cover each one. I thought maybe I'd be at sort of two to ones minimum against some of these hexes, but you know they're in. I did put them in fortifications deliberately to make them um, to, to, to make them tough, um, and that's why they're sort of at ones. Um, to possibly give the Chinese forces a couple of extra units. I mean, you, you know, it wasn't really a sort of a major sort of defensive action. Um, the Indians were not reinforced um, and they basically, once they realised they couldn't make any more ground, I can't quite remember it all, but that they, they basically retreated and one of my considerations when putting the map together was sort of, you know, is there enough ground for them to sort of do that retreat sort of action? I mean, they, it could have been slightly different, you know, they could have retreated earlier and then you know, taken that line and then, then pulled it across here and pulled it across here as they then retreated into Bhutan um, you, you know, and seen how that worked in where instead I, I just stayed there until I was forced out which is maybe not as historic um, you know, but I think it's an interesting game um, certainly interesting period um, interesting location in the in the Himalayas you know, I mean Carpo Latu um, 16,000 feet, Yomso La, 16,000 feet, you know, etc. Um, Carpo La 1, 16,000 feet. I mean, I don't know where Mount Everest is. Um, I don't know how tall that is. Uh, but, you know, I mean, this is like, this is truly mountainous terrain. 
Um, yep, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you feel that you can um, do better as either side, I think I'm going to leave it as it is. Um, uh, other than maybe putting the objectives in, but if you feel you can do better, then um, you know, sign up and, um, and go for it. I'll speak to you later. Cheerio!